Hi everyone. I just wanted to share with you a workflow that I was looking at today that combined something called uh, Dynaspace with Topologic. So let's take a look at what Dynaspace is. Most of you probably have heard of Dynashape, which is like a physics engine simulation for relaxation and all sorts of things. Uh, if you are not used to it, take a look at it. Um, but Dynaspace is part of Dynashape and it's used for space planning in Dynamo. And it was developed here, it says by Long Yun, who uh, has developed Dynashape uh, in collaboration with uh, Mohammad Asel from Autodesk. So this uh, website, if you just look at Dynamo BIM, if you look at the search for Dynaspace, you'll find this blog. This is from September 2019. Um, and basically, it does this. It does a bubble diagram. So you can write an Excel spreadsheet that specifies these spaces and their desired adjacencies. And it creates a set of circles uh, that have these types of constraints. And you can move these circles around and they will try to maintain the constraints as specified by the adjacency matrix in the Excel spreadsheet. So the Excel spreadsheet would look something like this. This is quite an extensive one. Uh, I created a simpler one for my experiment, which I will show you in a second. And they have a video as well, that so they can show you uh, how it works. So it looks like this, but we're gonna try it live uh, anyway, so I'll stop that actually. Um, so yeah, so it basically brings in the data from the CSV file it has an engine that outputs all the needed information, like the space names, space IDs, cir the circles, the, uh, the edges or the lines between them, etc. So we'll go through this. Uh, so what I did is I loaded their example file and then I added uh, topologic nodes to it uh, in order to do some hopefully interesting things with it. So let's go ahead and start Dynamo. Give it a second. It is taking a long time to start for some reason. Here we go. Okay, and the file that I have is called Dynaspace Example, so we'll open that. Okay, so let's go ahead and turn off the execute uh, or turn it on actually, excuse me, because then you will see uh, what it does. Basically, uh, it has these circles that you can uh, manipulate, you can move them around. And you can see that they have a kind of a set of lines, like rubber bands that are trying to keep them all to each other. So where did these relationships come from? They came from an Excel file. I will open that up. And basically I copied the ones that they have and kind of simplified it a little bit. Uh, so I have in this case uh, eight uh, spaces, uh, an entrance, a living room, dining room, kitchen, two bedrooms, a toilet, and a courtyard. And the idea behind the courtyard is that it is kind of central and uh, connects to almost everything except the toilet, I believe. So you can specify the areas, and these are just fake numbers in here, just kind of to give it like some kind of proportions, different sizes. And then uh, if you look at lo column K, this is where it says what uh, spaces are connected to what other spaces. So in this case, for example, the entrance is connected to 1 and to 7. So the, the, the dot here is just simply to separate uh, the space IDs. So those are the space IDs here. Um, so this is connected to one and seven, so it's connected to the living room and to the courtyard. And then uh, the living room is connected to zero, two, and seven, so it's connected to the entrance, to the dining room, and to the courtyard, and so on and so forth. Now in the documentation on the website, 
uh, they, sp they say that you don't have to actually do a reciprocal relationship. Once you do one relationship, uh, the reciprocal relationship is kind of implied. So you don't have to really say that the entrance is connected to the living room and the living room is connected to the entrance. If you want to be careful about it, go ahead and do that, like the one and the zero here. Uh, but they say that it can actually deduce those things on, on its own. Uh, this column here, the preference, I'm still not absolutely clear. I didn't really read the documentation very uh, carefully. I should have. Uh, but I assume it's kind of like a priority list about what should be really connected to what or what rooms are uh, really important to maintain. Uh, I'm assuming, like, for example, one would be the highest uh, one, but I'm not sure if it is the 10. Uh, anyway, uh, this requires a little bit more uh, investigation on my part. So let's take a look at uh, the script a little bit. So basically these, as I said, are the, um, the actual uh, eight spaces that we have here. But one thing to note is that I found out that actually the labeling, the numbers, are not, exact, are not what is in the Excel spreadsheet. It's not these numbers. So you really have to match the ID uh, to, the, to the actual space. Uh, the order of them is not the same as it comes in from uh, Dynaspace. Um, so I'm not going to go through this because this is explained on their website, on, the, on that blog, so you can actually f figure out how, how to do it. All I want you to know is that when you turn execute false is when actually you get um, the Dynamo uh, entities uh, outputted. So I added to this a couple of things. The first thing I've added is uh, the fact that I have uh, added the names to these circles so that you know which ones are, are which. So when you turn this to false, uh, you'll notice that I get the name, so I know which ones are, which one is the living room, which one is the courtyard, uh, etc. Which is, I think, is, is much nicer because you kind of get a, a feel for what is connected to what. Uh, the other, and I'll explain these uh, pipes and circles uh, in, in a little bit. Uh, the other thing is that I've done a uh, dictionary where the topologic wire that I'm creating from the adjacency lines, the vertices of that wire are embedded with a dictionary that has the space name of, you know, that's coming in from the Excel spreadsheet. So I'll, I'll go through that a little bit. So the first thing and let me maybe move these out of the way so that you can see the, the nodes a little bit better. Um, so the first step is to create a wire from the adjacency line. So I take all these adjacency lines that, that are outputted here, and I say topology by geometry and then wire by edges, and now I have a topologic wire. One thing to note is that I do not, on purpose, I do not merge those edges, meaning I do not find the intersection point between them, because these edges are really topological edges, they're not geometric. So just the fact that one edge crosses over another one doesn't mean that I should create a vertex there, because, you know, in reality, it could go in a completely different direction. It's a topological connection, not a geometric one. Uh, so I get, I get my wire without, uh, uh, as I said, without uh, intersecting the lines. And then, before I add it and make a graph out of it, uh, I create dictionaries and assign them to each vertex in the wire. So how do I do that? I get the center points of the circle. So one of the outputs are the actual uh, circles, as you can see here. Uh, I flatten them. So now I have eight circles, which, are, which represent the eight spaces. And then I find their center points. So now I have eight uh, center points. And then I convert those to... Um, oh, this one should be part of the thing, part of the group. So I convert these center points into geometry, so I get eight vertices, right, topologic vertex. And then I create a dynamo dictionary by keys, values, and the ID of it, or the key, is called, I call it space name. You can call it whatever you want. I call it space name. And the values that are coming in are the eight space names that I have. And those, again, are outputted from the solver right here under space names. So now that I have uh, this di these eight dictionaries, I change, of course, the dictionary to uh, 
placing longer so that I can create uh, eight dictionaries, not one dictionary with multiple uh, values. So I have uh, eight dictionaries here. And I have my eight vertices that uh, locate the centers of those circles. Now what I do is I set the dictionaries of the wire. So basically I take the wire and I say topology.setDictionaries and I feed it the wire as the topology that I want to set these dictionaries to. But in order for it to know where, where this should go, because you know it doesn't just go to the wire, it goes to the vertices of the wire because that's what I'm going to retrieve later on. I say that the selectors, basically the selectors are kind of a way to find the x, y, z of a vertex and say, put that dictionary at that location and find uh, what we call the, the closest, smallest uh, topology to assign it to. So like if it finds a line or a vertex, it will have a preference for the vertex because it's a lower dimensional uh, entity than a line or a face or a shell. So these are the selectors, basically. It's the uh, eight vertices uh, that determine where these dictionaries are going to go. So I have eight vertices and eight dictionaries. And to just make sure also, just as an added uh, security, to make sure that it is applied to the vertices of the wire, I put in a type filter, meaning ignore anything that is not in that type. So I get vertex.type from Topologic which is an int and the, it's the value of one. And I put that in. And this way, it will limit it to assigning these dictionaries to the vertices of that topology that's coming in. I hope, I hope that is clear. But now this, this wire, now after it comes out here, has vertices that have dictionaries in them that each of them is the space name. So now that I have this wire with these vertices, I create a graph, a, the kind of like the dual graph, but the, the dual graph of a wire, we consider it to be the wire itself. And so we create a graph by topology and the dictionaries transfer correctly into the graph vertices. So if I ever retrieve the vertices of this graph and I ask each vertex to give me its uh, dictionary, it will give me the correct uh, dictionary and space name. And that's how I uh, use that in the next step. So the next step after creating the graph is to find the shortest path between two spaces. So assume you want to find, as we do here, a path between the kitchen and the bedroom. So how do we do that? Uh, we get the vertices of the graph. That's eight vertices again. Remember, those have dictionaries in them. So we get the dictionaries. So now we have the dictionaries, and you can see them here. And then we say... Uh, give me the value at key space name. Remember, we could have even connected the same uh, ID here, space name, over to this one to make sure that if we ever change that, that also changes. But, you know, I didn't really bother to do that in this example. And then I say, okay, so now I have these values, right, coming in, eight values. I say, uh, find a string that contains uh, kitchen and find a string that contains bedroom these two things. Now, if you remember, we have two bedrooms. We have bedroom one and bedroom two. So we are going to get two, uh, oops, no, this one is the kitchen. Sorry, this one is the kitchen, yeah, right. So this is the kitchen, so there's only one kitchen, right? So you see one through here. Uh, this one is the bedroom, and you can see that it finds zero and number six uh, as true. So it found actually two bedrooms which is fine, we can deal with lists. And then I do list by filter Boolean mask, this, which filters this uh, list of vertices. So I connect it to the vertices so that you can see it here. So I'm filtering the vertices by this Boolean. So if something is true, it will keep it in the list. If something is false, it will take it out of the list. So in this case, it will only keep those two true ones and create a new list for me of two start vertices. So it's gonna start from the bedrooms, from the two bedrooms, and it's gonna try to find the kitchen as the destination. And you'll notice here, I only have one vertex in the end list, which is the vertex of the kitchen. So now that I have the, the, the vertices, uh, the kind of start and end vertices, 
I basically calculate the shortest path. Uh, this is again a topologic uh, graph method. So I say graph of shortest path. I feed it the, the graph that we have created. I feed it the start vertex and the end vertex. Just to note that these vertices have to be the vertices of the graph, not just any vertex that happens to have the uh, same x, y, z. It has to be derived from graph dot vertices because they are linked to the parent graph. And uh, in order to find the shortest distance rather than the topologic distance, uh, which is the number of segments, I feed it length uh, as a string into the edge key. This is kind of a default that, or this is a uh, reserved keyword that we have uh, in topologic. If you feed that into edge key, it will automatically compute, it, compute the shortest path based on the length of the segments rather than just the number of segments. So now we've gotten a wire which is the shortest path. And in this case, it's two wires. And the reason it's two wires is because it is, uh, we have two uh, start vertices, right? We have two bedrooms. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. And there they are. So basically, from bedroom one, you had to go through the living room, to the dining room, to the kitchen. And then from bedroom two, you had to go to the courtyard and then to the kitchen. It was a shorter thing to do that than to go from the courtyard to the dining room or from the living room to the, to the dining room. So let's see if we can change that, change the solution a little bit. And you can change the solution by, uh, you know, messing with the uh, circles and moving them around. So we're going to go ahead and turn this back to true, which means all of this will disappear now because it will become uh, interactive. And then we can move these things around, let's say like this, oh, it comes back to where it was. Let's see if we can change the topology a little bit, or not the topology, but really the distances. Okay, and if we are happy with that, we go ahead and change it again. And now, as you can see here, both of them go straight from the bedrooms to the courtyard, and then uh, onto the kitchen. And of course, we can change this. We can say, okay, how do we go from the entrance to the bedrooms? So we can go ahead here and just simply change the word kitchen to entrance. And we look at the solution. So here's the entrance. One went through the courtyard and one went to from the living room uh, to uh, bedroom two. And again, as I said, you can always uh, change, change these things. Uh, let's try it one more time. Uh, let's go from the toilet. Uh, and we don't have to put toilet one because I am using uh, string.contain. So as long as it has part of the string, it should find it. And there it is, from the toilet to the two bedrooms, it's a direct link. Uh, that's it, I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, let me know if you have any comments. Thank you very much.